Welcome to The Rot Focus, a podcast for rotters, newbies, and veterans, and everyone in between. We're hosted by M.A. Lee with the assistance of Remy Black and Edie Rooms, all from Rotters Inc. Books. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Each episode lasts as long as it takes to fix a quick dinner, grab a short commute, or take a brisk walk. Resources and links are in the show notes. Visit us at therockfocus.blogspot.com. Now, on to this week's episode. For many writers, openings and closings aren't the problem with story. We all have problems with the messy middle, or the saggy middle, or that long slog between fantastic opening and stupendous ending. The middle breaks or makes the story. Well, so can the opening and the ending. But it's the middle that causes the most groans for writers and for readers. In the archetypal story pattern, the greatest plot structure in the world, that troublesome middle is stages four to eight. It's not stage four that creates problems. It's not stage eight or stage seven. Nope. What causes the most angst for writers is our focus for this episode, stages five and six. Follow along for clues that will change your approach to stages five and six and hopefully keep them from turning into the messy middle mire that causes angst for so many writers. Stage five, crossing thresholds. Change is a constant. From Lewis Carroll's Through the Looking Glass. Can you do addition? The White Queen asked. What's one and 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 one? I don't know, said Alice. I lost count. Along with the mentor meet, crossing the first threshold stands between the protagonist's ordinary life and the transformation that will occur. The first three stages of the archetypal story pattern belong to separation and departure, events driven by danger to and sacrifice of the deer. The initiation and transformation segment begins with meeting the mentor and has six stages of the archetypal story pattern. Initiation can be ceremonial a purification ritual performed by a shamanic mentor before the protagonists launch into the journey they are forced to take. Most often, however, the initiation is the first major difference that the protagonist must adapt to. This difference forces a new perspective on the protagonist, opening their eyes to culture or deeds or concepts that they never considered before. That initiation into the adapting difference occur and settle into the protagonist's mind, then they encounter the first true death-dealing danger. The protagonist cross the first threshold. Thresholds. In the world of symbols and archetypes, a threshold is a transitional moment. Death is the greatest transition. It is the door to threshold when we move from this existence to an after existence. Crossing the threshold means the protagonist completely leave the known. They enter an existence never contemplated while in the ordinary world. Similar to Alice's plunge into the underworld, the protagonist encounter rules and ideas and items and people who are radically different. When contemplating story, Writers do not often consider that which must be completely different in the world of the adventure. Yet the challenge of this conflict is a crucial opening step for the transformation. A diamond must be cut and polished before it shines. Whether starting a new job, entering a new relationship, replanning a life that had to be abandoned, or changing old ways that failed in the old world, The protagonists have encountered a new that will force adaptation. Four newbies, rules, ideas, items, people. The Latin interrogatory seven is helpful when examining these four newbies 
with the crossing of the first threshold. The rules, ideas, items, and people of the new world that the protagonist has entered must be understood. The old will clash with the new. What has changed? What rule? What idea? What item? What person? Who has changed? Does the new rule or idea, item or person, does it maintain any trait that it once had? Have the old traits become tricky? That is, does the new rule or idea, does the new item or person veer between old and new without explanation? Are they transforming? Have the changes created a wall that blocks any attempt to use old understandings about it? How is the new experience different? Discovering how can take time. No one can scan the new, especially the completely new, and understand it immediately. Those differences might be masked, only appearing when the protagonist triggers something. Where and when? Is the change random or in a completely new pattern? Will it follow the newly established pattern until another trigger changes it? By whose aid? If someone or institution or other major element forces the new, the protagonist may not at first define that influence. The discovery of the mastermind could be a slowly unveiling process. Or it could be a traumatic flash that causes the protagonist to retreat. Retreat is not a possibility. The threshold is crossed. Return is not possible. Not at this time. And maybe never. Why is a crucial question which may take a good section or even the entire story to answer. The dual threshold in Hobbes' bargain. In Patricia Briggs's Hobbes' bargain, the protagonist, Erin, is shoved out of her old life into a new one. Widowed and orphaned in one event, she fights against accepting the change, only doing so when she is compelled to help others survive against the raiders. Erin crosses her first threshold on a journey to a neighboring village. She survives an attack by a strange new creature that embodies the beauty and the danger of the new world. That combination of beauty with danger is the new rule in our protagonist world. The world will no longer operate the way it did in the past. This new strange creature, a monster never before encountered, deadly even as it was fascinating, is the new item Aaron must contend with from now on. The new rule and the new item, the monster, force a new idea onto our protagonist accept changes, adapt to them, find a way to live with these changes. That new idea sets up the new, vitally new person in her life, the hob, a stranger person than she has ever known before, but who holds the key for her survival. Briggs is smart. She reveals the hob a step at a time, increasing our suspense and anticipation. When the hob is mostly revealed, he becomes a means to help Aaron cross the second threshold to even more of the strangeness of her transforming home. Each revelation changes Aaron herself as she learns about her innate powers that she kept hidden and unpracticed in her old world. Because of the dual threshold, Aaron becomes the heroic protagonist saving everyone because of the unique powers she first understood in her second threshold, taught to her by the hob, who is revealed in her first threshold. Crossing the Threshold The key to a writer's examination of this stage is to consider the necessary elements of the threshold. We should not dash through this stage. Develop each step carefully. We are in the new world, not the ordinary world. We encounter the first true obstacles. We confront the first guardians of the threshold and the new world, and we get past those guardians. The old ways do not have to die. New ways, however, must be understood and adapted to. Remember, this is crossing the first threshold. More thresholds will lie ahead. 
crossing deadly doors will be constant. Changes will confront our protagonist as the threshold is approached, dealt with, crossed, and the journey resumed. These thresholds must occur, for to survive the darkest stage of the journey, the protagonist must learn from these multiple crossings. As the protagonists continue their journeys, they will succeed and fail. Each failure becomes increasingly more and more painful. The stakes for each failure elevate higher and higher. Success is necessary for reader engagement and to reward the protagonists beginning to spill blood. Stage 6. Test, Allies, and Enemies. Constant Examinations. From Lori Hoss Anderson. Write about the emotions you fear the most. Test, trials, and tribulations. In school, tests determine what we know and don't know and how well we are surviving a course. 90% level, we're great. 75% hanging in there. 60% barely getting by. 35% are we even trying? Some students naturally excel. And don't those of us who are struggling envy them? Some students are distracted or unprepared. Others seem blithe and carefree to hide their angst. In life, our tests are more intangible. The life tests are so covert and constant that a test with 50 questions covering rationalism sounds like a breeze. Are we working well enough, creatively enough to earn that pay raise or promotion? How we met the client's expectations? Did we play a hand in the healing? How do we judge our own work? How do we judge when it's our life and we're too close to it? How do we judge when the results are only seen in the long term? We face tests with family and friendships, with finances and life spaces. We face trials in the daily grind and the major passages of life. We face tribulations that scare us and scar us, that drive us to our knees and measure the metal of our backbone. Read that last sentence again. We face tribulations that scar us and scare us, that drive us to our knees and measure the metal of our backbone. This sentence is the directive for writing Stage 6, Test Allies and Enemies. Purpose Field Examinations in the archetypal story pattern, each stage is not a single scene with its segue to the next stage. The test stage is the clearest example of this. The very name of the stage clues us in that we are dealing with a plural. In the test, we measure the metal of our protagonist as they encounter allies and enemies. The greatest test in the archetypal story pattern will not occur in this stage. The ordeal, stage eight, is intended to be the moment of greatest difficulty for our protagonist. Two remaining stages present the last crucial challenges, stages 10 and 11. What then is the purpose of these tests, trials, and tribulations? Training? More sacrifices? Something even greater? Yes, to all four questions. The destruction of the deer at the call to adventure propels the protagonist into the journey. However, the protagonist's interior change does not occur at that early point. Change only occurs when people accept that they must adapt to a difference. The protagonists enter the difference when they meet the mentor. The threshold crossing causes the first adaptation by preventing an easy return to the ordinary world. From that stage onward, protagonists are on a journey they actively pursue and will not retreat from. Coming after the defeat of the Guardian and before the next test gate is the protagonist's acknowledgement of the test lesson. When our protagonists reel from one event to the next, we remove the audience's emotional connection to them. The protagonist can refuse to acknowledge any lesson which itself is a lesson to be overcome. 
Without acknowledgement of a lesson, the protagonist remains static. Protagonists should be dynamic, unless you are writing postmodern absurdism. We can have our protagonist acknowledge that the path requires too much sacrifice and try to abandon the journey. However, the journey should and will pull them back. They can question and rethink approaches to their journey. Look at what they have sacrificed at their accumulating scars. Is the journey worth it? Is an easier path available? Will the easier path lead to an equivalent or greater treasure at the end? Yes, no, and no. These must be the answer to these three questions. Our protagonists may not achieve their short-term goals without connections with allies and enemies, both secret and obvious. Thresholds are tests. What are the tests? How do the protagonists overcome them? Why are they placed in the protagonist way? First, they are additional thresholds, each serving as an obstacle, each introducing a new, which is not part of the ordinary world, and each teaching about a lesson or skill that is needed to defeat the antagonist. Each test has three parts. The threshold into the test, the encounter with the threshold guardian, and acknowledgement of the lesson of the test. And there may be more than one lesson to the test. The threshold is the testing gate, not a mere event to be overcome. Each threshold should build suspense. Each lesson leads to knowledge necessary to overcome the ordeal. How many tests? Now, I'm going to say something obvious. Each testing gate has a path to it and from it. Don't skip over that. We often skim the obvious and move on, not realizing its importance. Our protagonist should not bounce from one event to the next. Create a lead-up with its blindness or stress, the event, and a leaving with its new sight or relief. Path to the test, one. Threshold, two. Encounter with the guardian, three. Acknowledgement of lesson, four. Path from test, five. That's five scenes to write for a single test, and a minimum of three tests. Test, trial, tribulation, remember? That's approximately 15 scenes in stages five and six together. We can collapse the five scenes for a single test, but should we? And this is the reason that writing is a recursive process. We may set up all the tests that we think are necessary only to reach the ordeal and realize additional knowledge is necessary. Will that knowledge come from the mentor, to be followed or not, or from the test with her lessons? Or we may reach the ordeal and realize some of the tests that we have written are superfluous, add or cut as necessary. Every scene in a story must have a purpose. Every test must have a purpose. These are sometimes called try, fail, try again sequences, but it's still test. Like puzzle pieces, tests should foreshadow the ordeal. Tests link the several stages of the archetypal story pattern. They can hark back to the call to adventure, the refusal of the call, and crossing the first threshold. They are part of the run-up to the all-powerful ordeal, yet they also touch fingers into the road back and the resurrection of the evil at the story's end. In Tolkien's Fellowship of the Ring, the great battle against the orcs and goblins in the mines of Maria foreshadows the huge battle of the Pelennor fields at the foundations of Minas Tirith near the end of the return of the king. The lessons Aaron learns about taking power from the various magical creatures helps her to understand how to defeat the corrupt Maj at the end of Patricia Briggs's The Hobbs Bargain. Understanding that love is more enduring and powerful than status or wealth helps Darcy decide to cleave to Elizabeth, no matter his feelings about her family and Jane Austen's pride and prejudice. All of these lessons occur during tests trials, and tribulations. What do writers want to know about plot? 
What do writers need to know about plot? The right focus is taking a comprehensive view of plot, the structure that develops characters, genre expectations, major story structures, pacing, tension, suspense. We cover it all in this series entitled Discovering Your Plot from M.A. Lee's Guidebook of the Same Name. Writers will discover unexpected insights and methods that deepen their understanding of this major craft in the storytelling world. Thanks for listening to The Right Focus, a podcast for writers at all levels, hosted by M.A. Lee from Writers, Inc. Books, assisted by Remy Black and Edie Runes. Our focus is productivity, process, craft, and tools. Music is licensed through Audio Jungle called Background Music Loop. Its creator is Alexander Polishchuk, known on Audio Jungle as Plastic 3. The music comes in different iterations. Show notes and resource links for this and other episodes can be found at therightfocus.blogspot.com. Write to us at winkbooks at aol.com when you have questions, comments, and speculations. We will try to answer you as quickly as possible. By the way, we will not mind your email address. That's rude. If you find value in our content, share with your writing friends or write a review. We're small beans here without the advertising budget of the big peeps, and you can make a difference. And whatever occurs, right on.